History is written by the victors. Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, and today I'm going to take a quick dive into the upcoming turn-based tactical game, Achtung Cthulhu Tactics, a name I'm almost definitely butchering. I apologize, I don't speak German. Published by Ripstone Limited and developed by Auroch Digital, the game is set during World War II and provides us an alternate history approach to the setting, one where Nazi experiments with the occult proved fruitful, and both allies and Nazis field strange Lovecraftian equipment, abilities, and mythical beings. Before I begin, I'd like to thank the developers and publishers for giving me a free review copy. Full disclosure, yes, I got it for free. But as many of you will already know, that does little to sway my opinion. Now, if you're interested in picking the game up after you see this review, I'll have a Humble Bundle link provided down below and under the eye at the top right corner of the screen. Buying from there will support charity as well as the channel. Now before we begin, I'd like to provide a little idea of who is reviewing the game. Reviews are subjective, and I think it's important to know whose thoughts you're listening to. I've been playing strategy games of all kinds since I was very young, and through many gaming phases I always come back to the loving arms of strategy games. I'm a fan of the XCOM style, and you may have seen me enjoying Battletech, Phantom Doctrine, and Phoenix Point on this channel. I'm picky. I like a challenge, I put gameplay over visuals, and I need to grow attached and invested in the story and characters for it to truly grab me. I also work a full-time job, so when I recommend a game, it means I'm willing to come home from a 9-to-5 that often lasts longer than a 9-to-5, deal with chores, and then still play the game rather than something else. Question is, does Achtung Cthulhu Tactics achieve that, or is it a cosmic horror that should stay unknown? First things first, let's discuss the basics. The game is an XCOM-style turn-based tactical strategy game. You've got a crew that you outfit and level up between missions, and then you go on story or side missions to accomplish various objectives, level up your troops, earn new equipment, and progress along the story. We see all the trappings of the typical game in this subgenre. Moving, shooting, overwatching, taking cover, upgrading individuals through branching skill paths, obtaining gear, etc, etc. The cover mechanic is a little simplified, forgoing the full half-none that we usually see for a more binary in-cover versus not in-cover approach. We also see a stress factor, fitting for a very Lovecraftian horror type of genre here. It's a bar in the shape of a heartbeat off an ECG, and when it fills up, your soldier does something erratic. All pretty standard affair, if you ask me. That's not to say the game doesn't do some unique things. At the start of a mission, and between engagements in any one mission, you move your squad around and interact with various story elements and go looking for trouble. There is an element of exploration, sometimes you'll come across side objectives, and sometimes you'll completely ignore them, depending on just how much trouble you're looking for. It's a nice idea, but a little poorly executed in that combat is triggered as soon as the enemy sees you, and that almost always happens from outside your area of vision and it's almost always forced onto you. There are no clever alternate paths, at least any that I've come across, or any grand scale flanking opportunities that make you feel like a mastermind. Just trigger an engagement and then deal with the fact that all of your squad decided to freeze at the first sight of the enemy rather than get to nearby cover like you ordered them to. Cover to cover movement is interrupted by this engagement beginning and that is really frustrating because you think you're pulling off some nice maneuvering but ultimately you get shut down. Now. Let's get to some of the really nicely executed mechanics though. For one, moving, shooting, and using abilities all pull from the same resource, aptly called action points. This means you can move, shoot, and use abilities in any order you like and to any amount you like, as long as it's within the particular individual's action point limits and also using momentum. And some of these abilities are locked behind these momentum points, an additional resource to consider when you're on a mission. The momentum bar fills up when things go well, and every pip that's filled can be used for various unique abilities, or to move beyond regular movement ranges. A nice way to balance special abilities and how well you're doing alongside important decision making. Some standard abilities, typically that we see easily accessible like going into Overwatch or firing a secondary weapon, are also tucked behind the use of momentum, and the proper use of momentum can be the difference between taking damage and wiping out an enemy squad with silky smoothness. Luck is a factor in the game as well. Outside of just needing to pray to the dice gods and RNG Jesus, your characters themselves have luck that drains before they start taking damage. On any given mission, you'll come across multiple engagements. Loss of luck is regenerated at the end of an engagement, but the loss of health is permanent until a mission is completed, adding an extra layer to health that manages to keep tension up without being too punishing. Basically, the luck needs to run out before the individual starts taking any actual physical damage that lasts through the mission. I'm down. 
Another new factor to consider here is facing, and this is one of my favorite implementations in the game. When targeting enemies, there are a few states they can be in. These are my own terms for them. Shrouded, identified, lit up, and flanked. Flanking is easy enough to understand and is quite common. If you approach from an angle where cover doesn't protect the target, they're easier to hit. The other three are a neat implementation of the whole horror genre, I think. Fear the unknown as it engulfs you from all sides until you can identify it and take it out. When you first engage the enemy, they move about like wisps of smoke, again fittingly spooky. Then when your units are able to see them in peripheral vision or even directly, you're able to identify them. Every new unit is presented with a little zoom in and title card, but on top of all of that, when you move an individual, you're able to determine which way they're supposed to look. If an enemy falls within that cone of vision, they are easier to hit and they are more likely to miss as long as they stay within somebody's cone. This adds a layer to scouting in the game. Send somebody up ahead to light up targets for others to get better shots at and to reduce their chances to hit as well. The fact that different weapons are optimal at one of three different ranges, long, medium, and short, also impacts how close you want to get to an enemy and with which character for scouting and for hurting from ideal ranges. A neat idea, all in all. Now, all of that is for naught if the AI is trash, and thankfully, the AI manages well enough. It falls back when under fire, it finds optimal ranges for itself, uses cover, and fights with abilities quite well. Often, it will wisely place itself just out of reach, opting not to fire until later. Sometimes, it does some silly things, almost feels like human error when it exposes itself to take a risky shot. Not sure exactly what's going on under the hood, but when it works out, feels great to be up against something like that, and when it doesn't, it seems pretty silly. At times, the AI uses the scale of the map to great effect, shooting and scooting and pulling you towards additional enemies, traps, and unideal terrain. I enjoyed how small engagements can often become quite widespread right across the map, and at times I carelessly waltzed into an ambush before I realized the game would play me like that. A big miss here is the lack of a strategic layer with much depth. The game feels a lot more linear than most in this subgenre, as there's very little to do outside of missions. Unlocking skills and assigning weapons is only so satisfying when you aren't also you know, researching technology or unlocking abilities, adding performance enhancing drugs into the mix or what have you. It just seems a little too flat, not enough room for exploration. Now sure, you can go on side missions to unlock additional gear and earn more skill points, but without a hub similar to like an HQ, the game feels a little hollow. There's a big hole that needs filling with some gameplay. Just some variety, I guess. Now, the repetitiveness of the game often got very draining, and it, it wasn't really able to hold my attention for extended durations of play. I was at first interested in seeing the new environments and enemy types, but eventually it started to feel like a bit of a slog. The game's second biggest issue, with all that said, comes in the audio-visual side of things. I said earlier that I put gameplay ahead of graphics, but I think it's important to note what's going on here. The UI is all fine. I'm a fan of skeuomorphic design, which is when things look like real-world counterparts in a digital space. I think it's all pretty well done, and maybe nothing really to write home about, but still, it's nice. It gets the job done. I like the character portraits and the models as well. They have a decent bit of character and flair to them. Uh, the music is also nice, though it does get very repetitive very quickly. And the same can be said for the sound effects. They sound great, and then you hear them a hundred times, and you get tired of them pretty quickly. Now, I greatly appreciate the fact that everything is voice acted, though, and pretty well voice acted, I have to say. Good lord. Sing's amulet inadvertently unleashed a veritable Shoggoth storm, as well as attracting the unwanted attentions of the Black Sun. I was wondering when we might run into those villains again. What can they want with Shoggoths? That's not just playing with fire, that's juggling with flamethrowers. Things have taken a turn for the strange, far stranger than we could have ever possibly suspected. What can these... My god, what's happening now? The biggest miss here is with the environment art. I like the shadowy fog of war, I like the smoky look, and I even like the wispy way in which the enemy is first spotted in the shadows. I like the fact that shadows are cast across the terrain and that darkness really does feel like it's enveloping you when you turn a corner. All very fitting for the setting and this sort of horror approach. Unfortunately, the environment art itself is severely lacking. It often feels bland and plain despite there being, you know, flowers and grass. And with some of these assets, it does feel like they're being lifted from, I'd say, like the early 2000s of video games almost. Maybe a bit of an exaggeration there, but you can see what I'm talking about, I think. I think the tech is a little behind, not taking advantage of some modern pipelines and options, and the age really shows. 
it's disappointing really, because it gets to a degree where it hampers my enjoyment. Blood splatters look campy rather than horrifying, and some of the visual effects feel like they fit better in a fantasy game than a cosmic horror strategy game. Is it the end of the world? No. But it is a pretty big ding considering what else is out there being done by studios of varying sizes. But now, it's time for the big question. Is the game worth getting? I'm not a fan of numerical reviews, I think they draw arbitrary comparisons and mean nothing as a result. What matters most is if the game is fun and if it keeps bringing you back for more or leaves a lasting impression. Personally, I think the game is okay. I don't feel a hankering to play it when I'm away from it, and I certainly don't wake myself up extra early in the morning just to sneak an hour in before work. The setting is nice, and the story is fun enough, but I found there to be a distinct lack of tension more often than not, and the lacking audio-visual experience coupled with the okay-at-best gameplay kind of left me wanting more. I can recommend this to people looking for a quick fix of the genre, but I don't think it's the kind of game that I'd keep going back to for every piece of DLC that comes out, if post-launch support is even in the books. It's a shame, really. Most of the parts for a great game are there. But with only a few inventive features and little to tie it all together, I feel like this is one to pick up during a dry spell of games or on sale. Funny fact, the prices aren't even published yet at the time of me writing this and kind of makes me wonder how much they're planning on pricing this game at, but I'm still comfortable saying pick it up on a sale. Anyway, unfortunately, this season is the farthest thing from a dry spell when it comes to gaming. There's a lot of really cool strategy games coming out. Uh, I do have a most anticipated video you can check out for some that are out within the next week, within the next month, within the next two months even. So, I don't know. I, I wish the game had done a bit more for horror strategy gaming. And in fact, it's got me curious about horror strategy games. It does a good job of dabbling in that area, and I'd like to see the envelope push just a little bit further. I hope you enjoyed this review of Achtung Cthulhu Tactics. As always, make sure you subscribe for more strategy gaming content, including reviews, previews, let's plays, and more. A massive thanks to all of my patrons for supporting the channel on a month-to-month -month basis, and a quick reminder that if you'd like to pick up the game, consider using the Humble Bundle link in the description and under the eye at the top right corner of the screen. Thank you all very much for watching, and until next time, cheers.